Hello lovely, welcome back to my channel. This is a like okay, YouTube channel. The first time of watching my video, please kindly click on the subscribe button to subscribe and also click on the notification bell to get notified whenever I upload a new tutorial. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you for sticking around. I love you. So today's tutorial is on how to make this short dress with exaggerated sleeve. I made use of velvet material to make this. So if you're interested, please continue to watch this video. Thank you. So today's story is on how to draft and cut cut and also sew a darkless gown with exaggerated sleeve. The sleeve is exaggerated. I'm sure you've seen that on the thumbnail. So I will be using this fabric. It is a velvet fabric and it's stretchy on both sides so this side is more stretchy than this side so that means i'll be cutting on this green line instead of this side so i'll be cutting my dress on this side so that means i will be reducing my measurements by two inches my bust is 34 then that means i'll be using 32 instead of 34 because the fabric is stretchy but if yours is not stretchy please work with your normal measurements so to draw this i'll be folding my paper into two this will be on fold so i'll be able to determine the side i'll be using for the side so i'll fold my paper into two and fold this way into two like this i'll fold it into two so my paper is on fold so the next thing I'll do is to measure the length of my dress. This is a short gown, a mini gown rather. So the length of this will be 32, including the Emmy allowance is 32. So I will just square down the measurement like that. Next measurement I will input is the basic neckline. The shoulder. the shoulder is 14 so 14 divided by 2 is 7 you know um, uh, the paper is on fold that means i'll be input out half of that so seven inches here and for the neckline i'll do in the basic neckline 3 by 3 if you are working with a plus size measurement please use 3.5 by 3.5 so line so um, where I mark the 7 inches for the uh, shoulder, I will come down by 1.5. This is for the shoulder slope. If you've been watching my tutorial, you just know how we do that. Then from there, I will mark my ammo measurement, which is the boss divided by 6 plus 1.5. My boss is 34, so 34 divided by 6 equals 5.6. 5 plus 1.5 is 1.1. That's what I measured here. So I'm going to square down this line here. And this line will serve as the chest line. C L. This is the chest line. So on the chest line here, I'm going to input the half of the shoulder measurement, which is 7. Then I will connect from the shoulder slope where we slow down to like that. The next thing is to measure what I have here, which is 7.1 divided by 2. Then I will from there, I'm going to come in by 0 0.75 for the front here, 0 0.75. Then I'll connect with my, I'll not, I'll not connect it. So yeah, I told her that I'll be removing two inches from the normal measurement because the fabric is stretchy. So that means on this line here, I'll input the bust measurements with the ball circumference which is 34 minus 2 is 36 then whatever i have left after removing the minus 2 is what i'll divide by 4 so boss is 32 now because we removed 2 inches so 32 divided by 4 equals to 8 so that's what i'll input right here then i will add 1 inch for sewing allowance 1 inch for sewing allowance then i'll finish up the Come all like that, like that. 
So the next thing is to measure from the shoulder to the waist. The shoulder to the waist is 16. So you use your own measurements. Shoulder to waist is 16. I'll square down the line like that. So on this line, this is where I'll input the waist circumference. The waist is 28 minus 2. You know, it's told us that our minus 2 inches. So minus 2 is 26. So 26 divided by by 4 equals to 6.5 6.5 inches then plus 1 inch for sewing allowance this is dartless and also stretchy fabric if your fabric is not stretchy please stick with your normal measurements so like that then I'll measure the difference from my waist to my book my hip the difference from my waist to my hip is 8 inches. Please measure your own. The difference from your waist to your hip. Mine is 8 inches. You just measure from your waist to where the fullest part of your hip. And then, so this is the waistline. Sorry, I didn't label it like W. And this is the hip line. HL. So, I'll measure the one quarter of the hip. The one quarter of the hip is... The hip is 36 minus 2 is 34. So 34 divided by 2. 34 divided by 4 is 8.5. Then plus 1 inch for sewing allowance. So now, for this now, so whatever I have here, you know the hip is 34 because we've moved 2 inches from that. So that means we have 34. Then 34 divided by 4 is 8.5. So instead of inputting the 8.5 here on this M line, this last this M line, the length of the bottom, instead of inputting, I'll remove 1.5 inch. Because to create that pencil effect here, so I'll remove 1.5. That means 8.5 minus 1.5 equals to 7. Then I'll add 1 inch for sewing allowance. So I'll connect. So from here, instead of coming this round, I will come down by 0 0.75. 0 0.75. So. Come down by 0 0.75. This. So can you see the gown like so like this so this is the front pattern so i will just cut it off because i will still open it to do some things to one side of the pattern so i'll just cut so for the alteration of the like line to create the effect that i want i'll measure what i have here on this shoulder line here and divide it by two So after that, right, so I will connect it to the chest line. So the chest line there. So that means once I connect it to the chest line, so after I've divided it into two, I will place my cover, this ammo cover, and place it here. Let the button touches the chest line here and the curve here. So I'll just go in like this. like that so this is the new arm o area for the for this dress so this is a new arm hole because that is the kind of effect that we want to create because this is that place so we are not going to construct anything so the next thing i will do is just to cut it open so i will cut this part open Ham all so one side this side will be open like this this is how we will leave it and the other side that's where we add our exaggerated sleeve so if you don't want yours to be this open you can call me just a bit like when you are doing yours just try to know how you want it depending on your preference 
so you may want it and decide i want i want my on the left hand side so that's why i did it here so if you don't want yours on the left hand side maybe what on the right hand side you just do it on your right hand side so that is all for the front pattern so this is the back pattern and i've already ruled my zipper allowance which is one inches so from the from here i will measure the seven inches for the shoulder you know the shoulder is divided into two this paper is on fold too because the back piece will be in two pieces so seven inches from the line where we marked for the zipper allowance the seven inches here and from there you come down by one inch for the shoulder slope for the back and on this here i will do three inches for my neck line or the neck width and for the neck depth is one inch because the eye neck if you are plus size if the measurement you're working with plus size two three point five by one inch then from here you connect them straight here like that and from here you measure your arm hole the same thing you use for the front you use for the back So on this line here, I'll input the shoulder measurement, which is seven here, and connect together. And I will divide what I have here by two. Then come in by zero point five. Then I'll use my curve by linear to connect. Just like we do for the front, we don't measure the measurement, which is eight inches plus one inch for sewing allowance. That's nine. So I'll connect like that. And on the waistline, the same thing we did for the front. 16. I'll connect. And we input the one quarter measurement of the waist, which is 6.5. Because I reduced the measurement by 2. The 1 inch for sewing allowance. Then from the difference from the waistline, this is the chest line, this is the waistline. Then the difference from the hip to the waist is from the waist to the hip is eight inches. So on the hip, I will input the hip measurement. It's been fine. One inch. Then I'll connect with my formula. Just like we did for the front, we minus one point five inch from the M line here. So from the M line, minus one inches from what I have here, which is six point eight point five. That is seven inches plus one inch for the sewing allowance then you come down from here by 0 0.75 And that is all for the back so i will cut, cut it open so in order to finish up the pattern you have to complete your by laying the front and the back pattern right and face so that you know where to indicate 
Oh, so this is the side that you use. This side, we does we just like this side for the front. So I will set it aside. So on this side here, so I will just trace it. I will trace this. So this back and front is like this. And the back. This side of the back like that. So I'll just place them on the fabric and cut out like so. For the sleeve. So for the sleeve, I'll be doing a slash and spread technique. So I'll just going to slash through this. Just slash through there. Just slash open. So, I just place the paper that I, that I cut, I place it on my fabric and I just trace it round like that. So, to sew the dress, I added interface to the sewing allowance on the fabric to make it easier for me to sew because velvet is very stretchy and this can be stressful if you don't add interface to the sewing allowance so i added so so the sewing allowance i just added interface to it you can make use of any interface you like to it to stabilize it and also to help you when you're sewing so i'll just sew the sewing allowance i will add zipper to the zipper allowance then the neckline i will use bias to finish it and also the ammo the area that will be sleeveless i will use bias to also finish up that area too so i just add interface to the sewing allowance on the sleeve then in the middle there i added interface to it i wanted to use it for standing first but i later remove it when i was sewing so at the edge of the sleeve i made the interface to be five inches long so as to stabilize that area and give it standing effect and i cut an elastic that is one inch loose around my wrist area so for the to convert the sleeve to make the sleeve just create pleats first you pin it down just pin it down like so then you start creating pleats so create a pleat then you place your elastic on it like that you might just you hold it down with your pin but the pin was just just use your pin to hold it down then you continue to create your pleat it was not really easy because of the fabric was stretchy and there is interface around the area so just be patient and create your pleat and you can do this on your sewing machine too like you can just create it there and sew it straight straight like that so this is me sewing it on my sewing machine like so so i'll just run a second stitch around the other side of the elastic straight like so just joining the sleeve together by the side here i'm just joining the sleeve to the hammer on the dress like that if you enjoyed this video please give me a huge thumbs up Please comment, like, and share the video. And if you've not subscribed, please click on the subscribe button to subscribe. The subscription will mean a whole lot to me. So thank you for watching the video. If you have any questions, please just comment down below and I will do justice to that. So this is the tutorial on this short dress with one exaggerated 
sleeve i will see you in my next video bye please subscribe